He's got thighs. You know what I mean? You just you don't talk about men and thighs, but he's got thighs. Yep, a good set of thighs can take you a long way, just like it did for the subject of today's video. Welcome back to Forgotten Player Profiles, where today we're talking about the burner, Michael Turner. Michael Turner was known as a power back, and after playing behind a prime Ladanian Tomlinson in San Diego for the first four years of his career, he signed with the Atlanta Falcons and proceeded to go on a five-season tear where he racked up over 6,000 rushing yards and 60 touchdowns. But unfortunately, the NFL does stand for not for long, and as quickly as Michael Turner made it to the top of the league, in the blink of an eye, he was out of the league for good. But when we look closer at Turner, he may not have been as good as the stats make it seem. Anyways, sit back, settle in, and let's see if we can jog your memory. Born in Waukegan, Illinois, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Turner attended North Chicago Community High School, where he played football for the school team, the Warhawks. In Turner's senior season, he rushed for nearly 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns, while maintaining a 10.5 yard per carry average. So basically, just give him the ball and you get a first down. He also led the Warhawks to their first playoff berth in eight years, as they finished with an 8-4 record in a win over Zion Benton. Turner ran for 295 yards on 19 carries, including touchdown runs of 67 and 90 yards, respectively. Even in high school, Turner was showing his big play ability. Turner's ability to break the big run isn't super surprising when you consider the fact that he also ran the 100 meter dash in 11.15 seconds. Coming out of high school, Turner was not highly recruited. Some speculation around why this may be could be that he may have been shorter than the schools were looking for, or that he was too one-dimensional, as he was not much of a threat as a receiver out of the backfield. Luckily, Turner would receive one scholarship offer from in-state Northern Illinois University, which Turner would accept to play for the NIU Huskies to begin the 2000 season. Turner would play in all 11 games of the freshman season and be half of a tandem backfield including him and sophomore Thomas Hammock. The Huskies finished the season at 6-5, and five, so like, nothing special, but Turner showed that he was capable of being a feature back in a D1 offense, even having back-to-back -back weeks of 200 yards rushing. While Turner was showing he could hit the home run ball, it was the lack of consistency of his efficiency that was already beginning to show. Turner would finish the season with 983 yards on the ground, a 4.9 yard average, and 7 touchdowns. Going into his sophomore season, Turner actually ended up seeing a major dip in production and usage. Hammock became far and away the lead back, and outcarried Turner by nearly 180 carries. However, once again, the Huskies finished 6-5. and five. Turner finished the season with only 395 yards, a 4.3 yard average, and 3 touchdowns. Turner's chances of going anywhere further than college were looking pretty slim. The 2002 season started strong for NIU, as senior running back Thomas Hammock ran all over Wake Forest for 172 yards in a 42-41 OT win, a game that would see Turner only touch the ball 10 total times. Sadly for Hammock, he was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy four days after the win. So although Turner would have likely preferred different circumstances to get his opportunity, he was now going to get his chance as the lone starter in the backfield, and he capitalized. Turner finished the season with five 200-plus yard rushing games and finished second in the nation in rushing behind future Chargers backfield mate Darren Sproles. He was named first team All-Mac and earned All-America honors from Sports Illustrated, Football Digest, and Sporting News. Turner ended the season with 1,915 yards on 5.7 yards per carry and 19 touchdowns and he led the Huskies to a respectable 8-4 record. Things were now looking up for Turner. Turner's senior season saw much of the same individual success. In his senior year, once again being second in the NCAA in rushing, All-Mac, and an AP All-American. But it was the Husky success that was more remarkable, as Turner helped the Huskies upset ranked teams such as Maryland and Alabama. The Alabama game, in particular, saw the Huskies go into Tuscaloosa and outlast the number 21 ranked Crimson Tide by controlling the pace of the game with Turner's bruising running that saw him finish the game with 156 yards on 27 carries. Just like in high school, Turner may not have been the most sought after prospect coming out of college, but he had done enough to be noticed and to get a chance. And as Turner had already shown, a chance was all he needed. Turner was given his chance when he was drafted in the fifth round 154th overall by the San Diego Chargers. 
This is the same draft the Chargers selected their quarterback of the future, Eli Manning. Oh yeah, that is pure joy. But, as we all know, Manning was traded for Phillip Rivers on draft night. Turner came in behind and entering his prime with Danian Tomlinson, so he wasn't going to be the starter anytime soon, or even really get any reps. Turner was used primarily on special teams, but did put up 87 yards against the Chiefs when he started in the season finale. Overall, Turner finished the season with 20 carries for 104 yards and a 5.2 yard average. The Chargers finished 12-4 and, and lost to the Jets in the wildcard game, a game Turner wouldn't play in. The 05 season saw much of the same in San Diego, as Tomlinson outcarried Turner by nearly 300 carries. The highlight of Turner's season came on an 83-yard, game-clinching touchdown run against the then-undefeated Colts team. The Chargers, however, took a step back and missed the playoffs with a 9-7 record. Turner did improve his totals, as he finished with 335 yards, 3 touchdowns, and a ridiculous 5.9-yard average. Turner was looking more productive and efficient, and perhaps he'd get more of a role the following year. So Turner did improve his totals a little bit the next year, and Phillip Rivers would start for the Chargers after the departure of Drew Brees, and the Chargers finished with a 14-2 record. But this season belonged to Ladanian Tomlinson, as he had you know, just a bit of a year. En route to NFL MVP, Tomlinson had 1,815 rushing yards, an NFL record 28 rushing touchdowns, another 508 receiving yards with three receiving touchdowns, and he added two passing touchdowns just for good measure. So it wouldn't really have mattered who else was in that backfield. They would have been an afterthought to this legendary performance from Tomlinson. The Chargers would lose the divisional round to the Patriots, and Turner would finish the year with 502 yards on the ground and two touchdowns, plus an even more ridiculous 6.3 yards per carry. Turner's last season in San Diego would be 2007, after he signed a one-year tender to return. Turner saw dips in his production, but the guy that just had the record-breaking MVP season is likely going to take priority when it comes to usage, so it makes sense that Turner saw a drop. The Chargers would go 11-5 and, and make it all the way to the AFC Championship, where Rivers famously played on a torn ACL and a loss to New England. Turner's season highlight was filling in for an injured Ladanian Tomlinson in the divisional round against Indianapolis and running for 71 yards. Overall, Turner would finish the season with 316 yards and one touchdown, on a more normal 4.5 yards per carry. Turner's time in San Diego was up, and he would be finding a new home over the summer. So, on March 2nd, 2008, Michael Turner signed with the Atlanta Falcons for six years, $34.5 million. The Turner signing was met with mixed reviews, as he seemed to have the talent, but lacked consistency. He appeared to be more of a boomer bust player in the sense that he was very big run dependent. Additionally, he was already a 26 year old running back with a lot of mileage. Although he had played somewhat sparingly during his first four years in the league, he still had those four years on top of four years in college where he had heavy usage in his junior and senior season. And honestly, Turner was a downhill, one dimensional runner joining a Falcons team that had just finished four and 12. How good could he really be? Oh, okay, pretty good, I guess. Turner would join the Falcons' first overall selection of that year's draft, quarterback Matt Ryan, along with up-and-coming fourth-year receiver Roddy White. These three looked like a core that could breathe some life into a Falcons offense that had been stagnant since Mike Vick's um, departure. From the jump, Matt Ryan looked like the real deal, and even threw a touchdown pass on his very first NFL attempt, and him and Roddy White seemed like they were developing a connection. As for the ground game, the burner had that seemingly taken care of. Turner went for 220 yards and two touchdowns versus the Lions in week one, and went for 208 and a touchdown in week 17 versus the Rams, and did a lot of work in between as well. The Falcons even made the playoffs with an 11-5 record, but would lose in the wildcard to Arizona, a game in which Turner would put up a weak performance with a 2.3 yard average on 18 carries for 42 yards and a touchdown. Michael Turner finished his first season as a starter with nearly 1,700 yards, 4.5 yard average, and 17 rush touchdowns, which set a Falcons single season record, en route to finishing third, or technically tied for second, in MVP voting, as well as being a first team All Pro and playing in his first Pro Bowl. On the surface, Turner looked like a great signing. So remember how I said Turner may not have been as good as the stats make it seem? Yeah, so in an 08 article by Matthew Gilmartin, he shines light on the fact that Turner has his best games against bad teams plays pretty abysmally versus good to great teams. 
Even though Turner had some huge games, he had eight games where he failed to crack 100 yards, and six of those eight didn't see him get over 70. And remember how he mentioned his start and end to the season with a combined 428 yards in weeks 1 and 17? Yeah, those two games made up for just over 25% of his 16 game total rush yardage. And who did those games come against? The Lions and the Rams, who had the worst and second worst ranked defenses in the NFL that year, and finished with a combined record of 2 and 30. So maybe Michael Turner wasn't as great as what initially meets the eye, but he produced for the Falcons, and you can't take that away from them. Going into the 2009 season, to their young passing core of Ryan and White, the Falcons added Hall of Fame tight end Tony Gonzalez to the mix, and the team started the season 5-3, and three. but then Turner went down with an ankle injury that essentially kept him out the rest of the season. He tried coming back in a couple games later in the season, but did not play much, nor was he very effective in those games. The Falcons finished 9-7 and seven and missed the playoffs, so it looks like Turner's presence was missed as they no longer had their guy to give it to and chew up yards. 2010 saw a healthy Turner return to the already potent aerial attack of the Falcons, and the team had high expectations for the season. The Falcons won an impressive 13-3 and got a home playoff game against the Green Bay Packers, in which they were blown out. Further highlighting another blemish on Turner's career was another playoff stinker, as he carried the ball 10 times for 39 yards and a touchdown. This stat line is not completely Turner's fault, as the game was a blowout and the run was abandoned, but with Turner not being much of a receiver out of the backfield, it hurt his ability to remain impactful. Nonetheless, Turner had another Pro Bowl season and was voted second team All-Pro with season totals of 1,371 yards, 4.1 yards per carry, and 12 touchdowns. However, much like 08, Turner had only 7 games with over 100 yards rushing and 9 with less than 90. It was becoming clear that Turner's value was in his ability to break off big runs, and as he was getting older, how quickly was that ability going to decline? The 2011 season was much of the same for Turner and the Falcons. The Falcons went 10-6 and and made the wild card versus the New York Giants. Unfortunately, Turner again disappeared in the playoffs as he averaged 2.7 yards per carry in a 15-carry 41-yard performance. Turner's regular season was still quite good as he had 1,340 yards on 4.5 yards per carry and 11 touchdowns. But again, this saw Turner surpass the 100-yard mark only six times. Going into the 2012 season, this looked like the Falcons' year. Turner was 30, but still coming off a more than effective season. The team still had Ryan, White, and Gonzalez, who were now all current or former Pro Bowlers. And they added one more piece to the puzzle, a receiver out of Alabama named Julio Jones. An offensive Turner pounding the rock and Matt Ryan distributing it to a spoil of weapons seemed like a recipe for success. It may have been the Falcons' year, but it wasn't Turner's year. Hours after a Week 2 win versus Dender, Turner was arrested for DUI. So off the field, things were starting to unravel for Turner. On the field, things were not much better. Up to that point, Turner was averaging 2.6 yards per carry and just didn't seem like he had it anymore. The Falcons would go 13 and three and make it all the way to the conference championship, but lost to San Francisco. Turner would have a respectable two game playoff stat line of 22 carries for 128 yards with a 5.8 yard average. But the bulk of that was done in the divisional round against Seattle. Against San Francisco, Turner only mustered 30 yards on 8 carries. This season would see Turner break Gerald Riggs' franchise career rushing touchdown record, but overall, it was a disappointment as Turner finished with 800 yards on a 3.6 yards per carry average and 10 touchdowns. One other thing that hasn't been mentioned is that in Atlanta, Turner was a fumble-prone player. In his 5 seasons, he coughed the ball up 15 times. So, on March 1st, 2013, one day before his five-year anniversary of signing with the team, Turner was released by the Falcons after he failed a physical. Turner would not sign with another team, and just like that, his career was over. Unfortunately, Turner has been in the news in recent years for things such as failing to pay child support and child abandonment. Turner appears to have hit a rough patch, but hopefully he can get through it for his sake and the children's sake. With all this being said, I still think Turner was a great player when he was on but it seemed that circumstance played a larger part than one might remember in his performances. He was one of my favorite players of that era, and it can't be denied that his powerful running style and nose for the end zone were dominant, but he couldn't sustain it. I think he is right where he needs to be when talking about good or great running backs, or great running backs of that generation. But I also think people need to take his stats with a grain of salt, as the sum looks a lot better than the parts.
Regardless, 60 touchdowns in five years looked easy for the one they called the burner. This has been Forgotten Player Profiles. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. There's plenty more to come. If you did, like it, drop a like or comment, or hit the subscribe button. See you next time.